Preseason week two is now in the books. Some teams playing their starters. We got Patrick Mahomes out on the field. Some teams not at all. What to make of it? Rookie quarterbacks and the Raiders have named themselves a starting QB. All that and more coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube or wherever you listen to this podcast. All the everydayers out there, we appreciate you. Make sure you hit that subscribe. Got to know when a new pod is live for you every single day here as we do on the network and today's episode of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers get uh, can bet $5 and get a three-week trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. All you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Okay, Matt. Uh, psh- a little behind the back from Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, but that- and, uh, it, it's, it is pretty... The worst part of the new preseason is not having any good on good, and then you get bad on good or bad on bad. Like, I want to, yeah, if if we could just get you know the ones to play a quarter and figure that out, then we could get the twos, and then we'd have we'd have some semblance of of being able to figure out what's going on. It's still a little awkward out there. It's still, uh, um, it's the, the, the new preseason format. I don't like it, Matt. And I don't like the new kickoff either, man. Let's start with the new kickoff. So it seems like every return ends up between the 25 and 30, like every time. And I, I think that I saw one go all the way back to the 32, man. That's like a big deal. If you get past <laughs> the 30, it's like, woo, you know, I mean, very rarely do you see one get in, inside the 10. And I have another one, thing that I have a problem with with the kickoff. So I'm at Steelers Bills the other night, and the Bills kickoff. And they they got a flag. I forget what they did. They might I think they jumped off sides. They left too early or something like that. And the Steelers had a bad return, and they said, let's re-kick it when we'll include the penalty. Well, all they do is move the tee back five yards, and he still kicks it in the in the landing zone, and it makes no difference at all. Well, you know, like the penalty didn't hurt them one bit. I mean, all no. all he, he, he still is gonna put it in the landing zone. I'm like the return what? This team is so dumb. And- the returning coverage teams don't move? No, I didn't Ooh. know that either. I didn't know how penalties work. All they did was move the tee backs, and everyone else just stays the same. So it's like he didn't penalize them at all. Nothing For bad sure. happened. Why not jump off sides every time? And you know, I, I thought that was weird. Uh, one thing I did notice with the returns is remember last week it was pretty obvious that the coverage units had a big advantage and were on top of the offensive players or the return team already. Once yeah, the ball, you know, once the, the returner started taking off, uh, I noticed co- um, the blocking units retreat a little bit more now. They're trying to create that space back again. So they can flip their head around. Yeah, so they could get around and get to a space and then try to create some blocking angles. So there was kind of like a little bit more of a retreat and then start to block. And I don't think it really changed anything, but that was right. at least one of the techniques I, I saw out there around the league. So that was something that uh, special teams coordinators absolutely saw too. So you're the one, the first one that brought this up to, that I noticed was that whole first line of blockers is looking backwards. You know, the other guys have such an advantage because they they don't have to turn their heads around. By the time their teammate catches the ball, they flip their head around. It's only two steps before these guys are on you and you're at a disadvantage. So I brought it up actually on Steelers Nation Radio and my co-host said, why not just have like someone on the sidelines with like a flag or something that, you know, like just stare at your sidelines at the assistant special teams coach or the back of quarterback or whatever. As soon as the ball gets caught, you don't have to flip your head around. You're just looking over there and they throw a flag, you know, they, they wave their arms or bah, you know, whatever they do, you know, like that's not a bad idea. Or have everybody look in and there's one guy in the middle 
that is turned around and nobody else is, and he's like, "Go, go, <laughs> go, go yeah. we're about to get go. smashed by yeah. ten guys that are trying to crush you." And I'm with you though on the, the on the preseason. Like, I think the whole planet knows at this point we're going to have 18 games and two preseason games, but they get more and more unwatchable every year. I mean, it's third string quarterbacks, and again, even like Steelers Bills played their stars, but it rained. So the Bills said, we're not going to play Allen, even though they planned on it, you know, because it was a wet field, you know. So even when things potentially are set up to be good, they weren't. And another theory, and again, this goes back to my Steeler Bills stuff, is they had a really physical um, group practice just two days ago. And then they play a game right after. Like the the practice might have been more physical and more demanding than the game, except for the guys that played 30, 40 snaps. And the game was terrible. Like the all the both offensive lines couldn't block anybody. And I'm th- sitting there thinking, like, it's almost like they played two days ago. You know, like no wonder they they're terrible. <laughs> and then we get a quick turnaround here for the final preseason games as well in week number three. But this is the one where I think we might see more. I think it's preseason. I don't know. Two. I was about to ask that too. Well, preseason game number two, I think, is the one we should start seeing more players in. I feel like. Well, I guess not if that's going to be the week that they have the. The joint practices. I don't. I, know. The problem is every coach looks at it differently. Like yeah. I think Sean McVay was even in the booth for the game. They let one of the assistants be the head coach. Like uh, you talk yeah. about a team that doesn't take the preseason seriously at all. We saw that with the 49ers. Kyle Shanahan really ran play calling duties for Clay Kubiak last week, and then this week he let Clay call some plays again, so he could call plays against his brother Clint, who's calling plays for the Saints. So Clint versus Clay were calling plays in the second half uh, of the 49ers Saints game. So even the coaches that think this is the most important thing ever, we need, you know, again, back to Steelers camp. I was talking to some old school Steelers. They're like, we had six preseason games one year. I mean, they if you won the Super Bowl in the 70s, you played against the Senior Bowl team as like your final preseason game. And then they had five on top of that. So people were in training camp for like a month and a half. And now they don't even take the game seriously. When was the draft then? I don't know. Or was that's the, a great was the, question? Was the Senior Bowl like for the upcoming senior? No, that, I'm wrong about that. That happened after the year. If you won this, if you won the Super Bowl, you had to put a team together against like a Senior Bowl team, and nobody wanted to take it seriously. And Joe Green's like, "We're not losing to these guys." So oh, like, that's amazing. It'd be terrible. That is unbelievable. I can't. That, <laughs> right. That, right. That, the last thing that could is even fathomable that would happen in this day and age. Isn't that unbelievable? And then they had six preseason games the next year. And it's like, what is going on here? But no, I think the preseason has gotten really terrible. I mean, it's not like my 18 year old was super psyched to go to the Steeler game. I drove him down to his buds. They couldn't, you know, stop talking about it. Got cheap tickets. He texted me like 10 minutes in the game, like, this is horrendous. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's bad. It's really bad. Unbelievable. All right. Um, there's luckily for us plenty to take away from some of these games uh, besides the kickoffs and Gardner Minshew has been named the starting quarterback for the Las Vegas Raiders. We're going to get to all that and more, including those rookie quarterbacks and one for some reason that did not play, which I find is is just insane to me. So we'll get into all of that as well. Next. This episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. It's the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car into the MVP. Bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. So Gardner Minshew has been named the starting quarterback of the Las Vegas Raiders. And um, Aiden O'Connell had a little bit of a a rough camp, apparently. And Coach Antonio Pierce, according to Tom Pelissero, have informed both of the quarterbacks. uh, And September 8th versus the Los Angeles Chargers in the division. It's going to be 
Gardner Minshew, Matt, for those Las Vegas Raiders. What do you think? So I don't mean to be in a negative mood, but this just seems like by default. I think this is the worst quarterback situation in the league. That doesn't mean they're going to have the 32nd best quarterback play this year. I just mean situation, long-term prospects, you know, finding the answer. I don't see the one of these guys as the answer. What I saw, read, and have heard, neither have been impressive to this point. And so you settle on Minshew. I mean, again, I thought he was going to be the starter the second they signed him. I think he's better than O'Connell. I think O'Connell's a lifetime backup. I think Minshew's really a lifetime backup too. But I know he had a decent year with the Colts last year, but he's also very limited. I mean, like they led the league in RPOs. He doesn't drive the ball down the field. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can't do with him. And I, and I guess they gave Gardner Minshew a decent chunk of money. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, man, I guess they're serious about this. But I don't know. I never took it seriously. The way that the season ended wow. and the Raiders won a lot of games with Antonio Pierce and Aiden O'Connell looked okay. He was like, yeah, you're going to go with the young guy and you got a veteran backup just in case it's a disaster. Was Aiden O'Connell that much of a disaster that Gardner Minshew had to be the guy? Or did he just barely beat him out? Either way, it's like, okay. It's not really tiring. The Raiders. Uh, and and so let's see if they can they can keep that momentum going that they built last year. But I do I do have my doubts there. And I think my, they gave him backup plus money. You know, like right. they're not really a true starter type money, even low-end starter, which and, is exactly what he is. I mean, I, I've said forever, Gardner Minshew is going to be Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's going to play on eight teams. He'll start 100 games on – in six different jerseys and bounce around forever. And that's what he is. You know? and, and, well, I think about this. So the Raiders ha had a, a pretty prime draft pick. Should they have been more aggressive to try to get a quarterback there? Then, If they didn't maybe. feel strongly about their young guy at all, and, and maybe, maybe they felt stronger then than they do now about Aiden O'Connell. It's not like, you know, we're kind of crushing the Raiders here, but it's not like, right. It's not like we're, it's not like Aiden O'Connell. We thought was going to lead them anywhere. Even if he won the job either. Uh, and you draft back-to-back -back top 50 tight ends, so they've been more aggressive at quarterback is my question if Gardner Minshew was really the guy that was going to win the job here. I, I just pulled it up to make sure that I was right about this. They took Bowers at 13, Nix went 12, McCarthy went 10, mm -hmm. Penix went 8. And I bet if you gave the Raiders front office true serum, they would have thought one of those three was there at 13. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, well, And they probably had the thought where, like, look, if one of those guys doesn't get to 13, there's someone else that's top six, seven, maybe five on our board. And how high was which is Bowers? Yeah, yeah. Right. To us. If if six quarterbacks go, one of one of these great players is gonna fall to us, which is yeah. a, which is a pretty good thing. But then all of a sudden you're like, okay, well, we still don't have our quarterback then. Right. Like I'm sure they had the conversation, like we like five of the six or whatever. There's no way six are gonna go in the top 12. Ah, ha, ha. And if they do. We'll end up with Roma Dunze or Brock Bowers or right. somebody that we have no business getting at 13, which I get, but they still, to me, are the most quarterback needy team in the league, probably, you know, in terms of big picture. I wonder if Devontae Adams is going to last there or, you know, Brock Bowers looks great, by the way. The little I saw him out there, he looks like a weapon and they're is using him and Myers a lot together, which is great. Is this, and yeah, they're, they can complement each other. So, yeah, yeah. I'm not lean into the two tight end thing. Can uh, is this a stock up for Brock Bowers? Is this someone that because rookie tight ends don't tend to do huge things? We I know mm -hmm. we saw one last year. Uh, is this a stock up for Brock Bowers with Gardner Minshew? Is this like okay, we're gonna we're gonna feature the heck out of our tight end over the middle of the field? I think so because again, he's a professional quarterback. I mean, he's gonna know where to go with the football. He's not a drive it downfield guy. And I know the Colts tight ends last year did very very little. But Bowers might be closer to Pittman than he is Joe Average tight end. And, and they fed Pittman like crazy with RPOs and quick hitters and easy throws. Maybe that's Bowers. All right. We'll see if uh, things are better under with uh, with Gardner Minshew under center than they were with Jimmy Garoppolo under center. And uh, so we'll be, I'm sure, no doubt everyone's going to be looking for body language signs from Devontae Adams during the season. Uh, yeah. Those Las Vegas Raiders. How about the Minnesota? I bet he could be had. I know he's a big cap hit if they move him, but I bet he could be had. I would think so, especially if they start to lose a lot of games. Yeah, yeah. 
Stephon Gilmore to the Minnesota Vikings. One year, $10 million contract. And uh, the Minnesota Vikings, we I think, are a team that we all look at and say, okay, growing pains, building year. I think the Vikings are telling us we're signing veterans to go win this thing. We're going to win a whole bunch of games under Sam Darnold. Yeah, and I think it shocked a lot of us that Gilmore and Simmons were out there as long as they were, who was just recently signed by the Falcons. And I think a lot of it is just – these older dudes don't need training camp and they're not excited about that. And they can hold out until a couple bad things happen or teams get worried about their safeties or corners or whatever, maybe get a little bit more close to the season. We knew they're going to end up on teams as starters. Either way, I thought he had a pretty good year for the Cowboys. He's not that you know league or defensive MVP type of player. He was for a short stretch there, but a really rough game against the Packers, as did everybody in Dallas, basically, in the playoff game. But this defense, I mean, it sure feels like the Vikings have been searching for corners forever. Like, they've drafted them pretty high over the last five, ten years with not much success. And that defense is stressful on corners. They blitz a ton. They led the league in three-man pressures and six-man pressures, you know, which is weird. They just throw a lot of stuff at you, but... I think a solid veteran man-to-man corner is useful for them. Definitely can't hurt. Uh, I, no, I don't right. think there was a team I expected guys like Simmons and uh, Stephon Gilmore to land. I, I think yeah. clearly, you know, the, the Falcons, I see what they're trying to do here. The Vikings are just in a weird place. And so I don't know if that was really the fit I expected. But Stephon Maybe Gilmore is obviously still a good player and, you know, was going to be a mercenary somewhere. There's probably a team that's, uh, that I felt like might have been a better fit that's like really in win now mode. They could have used another cornerback. So mm-hmm. with, I, I understand yeah. Atlanta pushing their chips in, and we'll talk about their quarterback situation here to round out the show, but they're, they're also in a much easier division, and they just spent a lot of money on cousins and other things. I mean, I can see them being a potential, you know, prob- maybe a probable playoff team, or the Vikings, even with the quarterback injury, this looks like, you know, step, you know, Take a step back year and get ready for next year. Try to be a contender type of team. Matt, were you able to get more insight watching those joint practices than you were the uh, the the latest Pittsburgh Steelers preseason game? Talk to me about the injury sort to Jalen Warren, and talk to me about Justin Fields and uh, and how things are going there. Because everyone's everyone loves to talk about Justin Fields. They're mad at him. They're like, "Oh no, uh, he, he looks okay. This this fumbles weren't his fault." The guy he missed over the middle of the field in the end zone in this game, this receiver actually kind of let up and it made it look worse mm-hmm. than it was. And you watch the replay and you're like, yeah, it kind of did. But gosh, you still want to be able to hit that throw. Could he have thrown it a, a little bit shorter, maybe a little bit over the middle of the field, help his, help make his receiver's job a little easier instead of trying to be perfect. Uh, so what's going on with the Steelers there? Okay, so Warren's out. The rest of preseason, highly questionable for week one with a hamstring got injured in this game and didn't look great, but uh, don't count on him in your fantasy leagues for week one. I would imagine Cordero Patterson will then be the Najee's backup against his former team, the Falcons. And if it's only a week or so, no big deal, but you know, hamstrings can linger. So that's concerning. Um, as for fields, he, he makes plays. He, he, I mean, the, the, but they're all running, you know I mean? He's made a couple throws. Don't get me wrong. Running, rolling to his left, he's thrown some strikes. But, like, it's funny. You mentioned the, the missed uh, touchdown. I had never heard of that wide receiver. He played one snap in that game, and I guess they pulled him after. It was late in the game. He had one snap, go route, and he kind of slowed up. But either way, it should be a better throw. And Fields, I mean, protection was really a problem for the Steelers in this game. Broderick Jones was getting eaten alive by uh, uh, Rousseau. Rousseau looked awesome. Ed Oliver looked awesome. But both offensive lines were really, really bad in this game. Um, but Fields, he's still running when he's not pressured. He's holding the ball a long time, but he makes a lot of plays. Like we had so many call-ins, as you can imagine, after the in the post-game show. Fields should be the starter. Wilson just checks down and gets sacked. I'm like, yeah, but I mean, maybe Fields is harder to play against, maybe, but he's not doing quarterbacky stuff, really, either. This is kind of what he was in Chicago, you know. So he he is what he is at this it's point. Enticing, but yeah, and it's uh it's a he's a frustrating player. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's gotten better in practices, but still the ball doesn't come out when it needs to, and you know, year ten, year ten he might get there. We'll we'll maybe. 
<laughs> it, you gotta just lean into the rushing ability at this point. Use him as and an it's expert. superb. Taysom Hill. He's the he's the new Taysom Hill. I do think they'll have some kind of package for him though. Like I, th- I bet he gets his jersey dirty every week. You have to. Yeah. He's hard to play against. Next, rookie quarterbacks. And how could the Atlanta Falcons not put their rookie quarterback, Michael Penix, out there of all the quarterbacks to go get some reps in his rookie season, preseason week two next? Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And I know you hear us talk a lot about America's number one sports book, which is FanDuel. Well, have a little something extra, a little different for you this time. And it's a fantastic offer. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. So all you have to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, rookie quarterbacks, let's start with Panix because uh, we've teased it. And uh, what is the thought process of not playing Michael Penix in the preseason, especially when you have a veteran who's ready to play? Like, what if what if the, the worst possible scenario is what happened to J.J. McCarthy? Maybe that's what scared them off of playing their quarterback. What if that happens to Michael Penix? Well, he's probably he's not supposed to play much as a rookie anyway. So and he's not going to play during the regular season. Uh, if if Kirk Cousins is healthy and playing well, so Raheem Morris said uh, that he Pennix, said we've seen enough of him. We know like we, we know what he is already. He's yeah, he's done. Yeah. You know. Their reasoning was that Penix showed the coaching staff enough in the first preseason game in Miami that they didn't feel the need to play him out there in preseason week two. Which is, I mean, it just it sounds insane to me. It sounds insane to me too. Like I get it. You know, McCarthy just got hurt. We don't want to be the next one. We, we don't want to ruin this kid's rookie season, sorta. But don't you think you'd get better in a game? I mean, it, it, my only thought is I mean, the McCarthy thing aside, and I just fear do they do they fear Cousins might not be ready for Week One? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm reaching here. I'm just trying to trying to get in their mind, thinking we might need this guy for Opening Day. Uh, is it is that a possibility? I mean, I haven't studied Cousins, but I don't think he's doing hardly anything. I know he's not going to play in the preseason. Yeah. I kind of just forgotten about cousins and know he's like kind of, you know, he's fully cooked, but in the oven's off, but he's just in the oven staying warm for dinner time. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like the, the vibe I got with him, but, but you're right. Maybe this is a situation where I'm he guessing. might not be ready. The, one of the big problems I have with this, Matt is, and I know preseason games are somewhat meaningless as far as the score goes, mm-hmm. but for some players that it's the, the preseason is very meaningful and a rookie quarterback needs all the reps they can get. And when I when I look at what can be gained, what can be lost, and you think about, okay, preseason football, regular season football, I get, but if it's, why put them out there in week one or week five? Like if it's, if yeah. it's such a, if it's such a danger, how, how do you ever feel the football team? Oh no, he might get hurt. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they're not that delicate. I know guys do get hurt and you don't want to be ridiculous with it, but they get better too. How, how do we have a sport if it's that, if it's that dangerous? Like, Oh mm-hmm. my God, we can't put, we can't, he can't play two series. He might get hurt. Not to mention, I mean, Case Keenum's not the worst third quarterback ever either. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. at least he's been around. I mean, if by chance you had to use him week one, it's a lot better than, you know, some of the guys we've seen. There's sort of some third string quarterback options out there, but I'm with you. Like, I, it made me crazy. And I said over and over, week one, the Panthers sat like over 30 guys. You're the worst team in the league with a second year quarterback in a new system. You don't think playing would make you better? I mean, any rookie quarterback needs to play. Meanwhile, Andy Reid's out here with his star quarterback back to back. And Patrick Mahomes is out there making plays, throwing passes behind the back getting ready, and they're the Kansas City Chiefs coming off Super Bowl win are going to be the most ready team to play in the NFL. 
in week one. And other teams won't even play their rookie quarterbacks or the Carolina Panthers. We talked about last week is egregious as well. Not getting Bryce. I don't get it. Right. Yeah. Trying to improve your football team and get ready to play and get better. Like that's what this yeah. is all about. Cancel the preseason. If you can't even field a team because everyone's, you're so worried about people getting hurt. I, I don't understand it. I, I just think the league right now is in a weird place as we did to open the show with how they view this preseason. You know, everyone looks at it differently and more and more teams are just getting so conservative and not playing their guys that are assets. And I, I think some of it's a mistake, especially for like a first round quarterback that needs every rep you can get. Yeah. And then, then it gets a little frustrating from an evaluation standpoint, because then you have uh, yeah. team, one team that does throw out their ones, but then they're playing against the other team's backups and you don't really get a good clean picture of what's happening. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's a frustration from, from our standpoint as well, but we did see some rookie quarterbacks out there and Caleb good. is passing just about every test and yeah. um, maybe bailing out of the pocket a little bit too soon, but made some highlight plays, dropping it in the bucket, deep ball down the left sideline of rolling to his left, throwing across his body to Romo Dunze, beautiful pass. And then one that didn't count also to Romo Dunze, but he was out of bounds, scrambling right and making the throw into the end zone, just making plays looking exactly like the guy that we saw at USC. 100%. And started slow. He went three or four series without doing much of anything, not really showing a lot of rhythm. And he looks spectacular. I mean, he really, really does. He looks special. I don't mean to throw you know big words around loosely. I mean, his balance, his body control, speed of the game, and all those things. But I heard Greg Cosell on a podcast saying something along the lines of, yeah, but we always knew he could do those things. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see the Justin Fields conversation. The three-step drop, ball comes out when it's supposed to on time within the structure of the play, which is a lot harder than it looks. And that's not to take anything away from Caleb Williams, but Nick's, to me, look like he's doing that stuff the best, you know, of just running the offense. It's not as spectacular, but he's running the offense. Bo Nix might be winning himself a QB one job. I think, I mean, I think have so. the, the stiffest competition in the world with Zach Wilson and uh, Jarrett Stidham, but uh, Bo Nix looking okay out there, throwing a touchdown pass. He was eight of nine passing for 80 yards and a, and a touchdown. And look, mm -hmm. you draft a guy that high. He also scrambled a couple times. He's shown his, yeah. his running ability. He's got some mobility. He's not dynamically fast or anything, but in both preseason games, he's shown an ability to get out and, and make some moves with his legs at this point. It's not it's not even so much like, oh, he's ready and he is the guy. It's just like, why would you not put him out there in week one? Yeah. Yeah, they're playing him a lot. And I think him and Jaden Daniels to me look their age. You know, they both came in the league older with a lot more experience, and we saw more of Knicks than Daniels, but I, I think that their maturity on and off the field has shown up in the preseason. I bet Sean Payton announces Knicks as a starter like any minute. I mean, it just seems like a foregone conclusion at this point. And, you know, I mentioned that he's 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 running the offense and he's efficient, but he had his share of spectacular too. There was a touchdown called back where he was slightly over the line of scrimmage when he threw it, but it was a total improv play. And like you said, he's a way better athlete than people give him credit for, as is Drake May. All these guys are really athletic. And we already talked about Drake May on Friday's show and mm -hmm. uh, had a really nice looking preseason week number two. And, you know, Penix and, and J.J. McCarthy didn't play. So that's kind of the uh, yeah. the the rookie report there. Um, one more note on a quarterback who's not a rookie. And it was pretty stark watching Texans Giants, Matt, because C.J. Stroud mm. is a is a really good quarterback and he's going to Daniel. remain very good. Daniel Jones throwing picks all over the place looked some bad ones really bad for uh for a co veteran quarterback the guy's been around as long as he has two picks he was 11 of 18 passing he was out there quite a bit trying to get some work and didn't look great doing it I, I, it's not like a new story but just what are the giants i just, I just it was just stark in that game you're like all right feel great about the texans feel terrible about the giants yeah and real quick on the on the rookies i just have one more note that I think it's safe to say the four that played, I don't want to comment on Atlanta, are all very happy with their choices. I mean, I think they are all very happy with the four first round picks that played this week. I mean, uh, we're, you know, that, that's a successful story thus far. 
And Jones just had two unimaginable picks. You know, like if it was a rookie's first time being out there, you might even excuse it away. But um, I don't know. Uh, and neither one of us are big believers. He moved the team a little, but overall, I mean, you can't make those kind of mistakes. And I know it's only preseason, but still, I don't. That's not okay. And unlike the Raiders that we talked about, the Giants did have an opportunity without trading up to draft some of these yeah. quarterbacks. And uh, they did try to trade up to draft a quarterback. So they kind of knew that they needed a, a long-term quarterback, but I guess they didn't like the other, anybody outside of the top three. And Drake May was, you know, reportedly their guy. Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, Neighbors looks like a total superstar. And is like the talk of the fantasy community and camp and all that. Like, uh, I'm on board there. Four catches for 50, 54. He's, uh, uh, he's dynamic. He does look yeah. good. And I always say this because fans get really upset. Like, oh, you missed on this other guy. Or they could have drafted this guy. They could have done this talking about their team. It's like, well, what did the guy hit that they took? Because if you hit on your draft picks, you're ahead of the game. And Hard enough to hit on a draft pick. Say what you want and spend decisions that, that have um, been coming for a long time. Like, this is years that this has been in action with Daniel Jones. And be like, are you going to move on or not? And they're not going to. So it wasn't just one pick one day that changes the the fate of quarterback for that football team. But as long as you hit on the guy that you did get, then you're still in a good spot. Yeah. And I, I think I opened the show by saying, I think the Raiders have the worst quarterback situation in the league. It might be the Giants because they're actually more invested. There was no expectations for the Raiders guys. Like right, right. Have been for, uh, for the Giants. All right. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day for your second listen. Go check out Locked On Fantasy Football, Locked On Dynasty Podcast as well. We've got you covered getting ready for your drafts, strategies, so you can go win your leagues this season. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure you subscribe to Peacock and Williamson on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. Matt and I back tomorrow right here, Peacock and Williamson.